Howdy ho. Welcome to another wonderful video edition of the Dennis and Andy show. And, you know, I just like introducing ourselves, even though now it's on video. I don't think I have to, but I will. I'm Andy and this guy, it's Dennis. Welcome back. That's right. Thank you for joining us. As always, we're going to start off with a little fantasy football talk. Yep, fantasy football time. And we both can celebrate. Woo! -hoo! We won! We both won our games. First time this season that's happened. Usually it's First time we both lost. won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually, you, well, hey, 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 buddy. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Let's not disparage the dirty boys. I have four wins. Five losses and, and one, one time. time. I'm sorry, how many wins do you have total? Oh, I have two now. Okay, so... <laughs> all, I'm say all I'm saying is, let's come down off that high horse years going, usually we both lose. Oh, okay. I have a 100% win record over you. You know that, right? I have four, you have two. That's 100% better. I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not denying it. <laughs> That's it, right. It, it, this, this whole season has been crap, and I didn't even have a good week. But... The gentleman I played had a worse week than I did. None of our guys. He was projected to get 109 points and got 66. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is just rough. I at least got 88 out of a projected 94, so I still yeah. underperformed, but by a lot less margin. So I'm happy. I got my second win. Still safely tucked in last place. But you, on the other hand, at least moved up. I moved up. I am now in sixth place. That is sixth place. Yep. Um, I was actually projected at 90 points and got 101, so overperformed. And my uh, opponent was projected at 106 and came in at 86. I know. That is sad. And the other thing is my one tie, it's against this person, Chuck Tall Chick. Yeah. We tied the very first week. We had our rematch. And I was like, that's it. No more ties. Taking you down. And you took her down. I took her down. And I have to actually kind of thank your wife as much as it pains me. Because <laughs> she said, tell Andy he's got to change his uh, lineup. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not one of those fantasy guys. I don't like get the fantasy football magazine before the year starts. I don't read up on all this crap. How I auto drafted. Okay. He, he stayed up and did the draft. I auto-drafted because I was like, 10 o'clock at night. I got better things to do, like catch some Zs. This beauty needs to I should have auto-drafted. You should have. I should have. So I auto-drafted. And, you know, when I saw my projected points before I made my adjustments, I was like, what is up? And then I realized why why your wife said that. Because I had like four players on by. Yeah, she was chuckling in the car the whole way. She's like, what? Well, What's Andy doing with his team? I'm like, I don't know. She goes, you better tell him he better change his team. And, of course, Andy's like, well, he was like, well, why, why would I listen to your wife? Look what she did to you last exactly. week. Exactly. Which is a true exactly. and a fair point. However, you did. You had to swap out a bunch of guys. Oh, my God. I did. I, I literally, my bench wasn't that great either. So I dumped guys, picked new players up. Uh, long story short, it worked out because, you know, I, I won, shockingly. I didn't think I was going to. But it gives me hope for this week because this week, so last week I was 101 to 86, projected 90 to 106. So big swing there. Whereas this week, uh, I think the margin is maybe close to about the same. Except I'm the underdog again. So I'm thinking, see, and the, you, you can never tell. Right. I'm playing Chad this week, the guy who's in first place. He's projected to get 119. I'm nowhere near that. So my hope is we get our tie in because usually he and I yeah. tie at least once a season. And we haven't had our tie yet. So I'm kind of shooting for that. So we got to talk about our actual team. So the Packers played, you know, they played Jacksonville. I was, I was a little worried even being a home game because home really doesn't mean much of anything this season with right. COVID. But, the you know, the Packers were behind. We had gone up to a comic sale and stuff. So I think we didn't get to watch the Packers live, but I, I kept up on that. And on the way home, I'm like, oh, Packers are losing in fourth quarter. Yeah, we got Aaron Rodgers. We'll, we'll, we'll win it in the end. And we did. 
So I was pretty happy with that. So the, I was the, the Packers won. I was still amazed that they were even down though. Because who were they playing? It was Jacksonville. Right. Yeah. One in eight, or at the time, one in seven Jacksonville. I can't believe they were even down. That, I know. That's like when Dallas played the Steelers and took them, took them, took it to them. Yeah. Jacksonville brought it to you that's guys. That's just it. You never know what's going to happen. You know, it's like that famous movie. Any Which given one? Sunday. That and that is true. That, that is, true. is true. But the Packers got their win. We're good. Um, we're playing uh, Indianapolis, so it's actually going to be a really good game this week. And again, I'm starting Philip Rivers, so he's playing my team. So, you know, kind of got a root for me to lose and the Packers to win. But hey, I won and the Packers won. First time this season that's happened. And you know what? Dallas didn't chalk up another loss either this past weekend, so I'm happy. Yep. You know yep. why? What? I don't remember seeing them play. That's exactly oh, why. Yeah. Dallas was on a bye. Hopefully heal everybody up, rest up, reevaluate, yep. go into the locker room, watch some tape on why they suck. Yep. Try to figure out why they suck. Defense, starting line, you know, things like that. Yep. The thing that annoys me, though, is so they're playing the Vikings this week. So, I mean, that's not actually the thing that annoys me. The thing that annoys me is they're starting Dalton. After how good Gilbert played. Yeah, and I, I know. Don't, that's a bit surprising. And I've got Dalton on my bench. Right. And that's why I'm like, ah, I guess I'm going to keep Rivers in because I, I just don't know what Dalton will do. Watch, he'll have a 50-point game and I'll be kicking myself that next week. That would be awesome. But I'm just – I don't know. I mean, when you compare – Gilbert only played the one game. But when you look at what he did compared to – I think Dalton only played two. Yeah. Two and a half. And, and you just compare, I would have kept Gilbert in. And then, you know, if, look, if Gilbert's not looking good after the first quarter, great, yank him. But maybe that's their thought is start Dalton, and if Dalton's not looking good after the first quarter, yank him and throw Gilbert in. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun if we took a rundown of all the games and, uh, and uh, give our uh, predictions. And tonight's game, because we record this on Thursday. Whoa, yeah. that's a little... That's a little uh, behind the scenes. Nobody needs to know. This isn't live. I think they knew that by base what we're going to just say. What, what games? <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have it. So, man. Sorry, guys. The man behind the curtain. It's All right. Here. So, tonight, Cardinals, Cardinals and Seahawks. And they're both 6-3. and three. I know. And it's a, it's a good game. And I know oh. a lot of people are picking the Seahawks. I'm going to pick the Cardinals, though. I actually think the Cardinals are going to do it. Sorry, sorry uh, Russell Wilson. No, I'm taking Cardinals, too, because they're playing in Seattle, and I do fall into that that 12-man crap because how loud it is, but they don't have that going for them. Right. So that's why I think the Cardinals will do it. Plus, I think the Cardinals are a good team. Um after that Hail Mary pass last week, good Lord. Yeah, I was, was actually a, rooting for the Bills. Too. That was amazing. That put them on par with Aaron Rodgers. They, they, that's what they were comparing him to. No. For the, oh, yeah, they were doing comparisons last week. So, yeah. And Aaron Rodgers will be coming up later in this episode, too. Yes, he will. <laughs> so, after that, we've got the Bengals against the football team. I am going uh, – we'll go back and forth with who goes first. So, you went – Yep. So, I'm going Bengals, even though it's at – it's in Washington. I'm, I like the Bengals. I like the quarterback. I'm taking the Bengals. And I'm going with the Washington football team what? just because they're going to stay ahead of the uh, Cowboys. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> dick. That's Sorry, the Mike McCarthy. Whatever. Go ahead. Oh, well, I we think got we know Falcons who... and the Saints, and, you know, I never discount the Falcons from anything, but the Saints are just looking really good right now. I mean, it's an easy one for me, Saints. God, it's got to be the Saints. I mean, it's in New Orleans. Yep. I, I usually default to who has the better record, which isn't always the case, I know. No. But when you're looking at three and six Falcons, seven and two Saints, Drew Brees. And actually, Drew's out for a while. Oh, yeah. He got hurt. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But still, they're, they're yeah, playing I mean, Winston, Jameis yeah. Winston, which who looked good last week. Yep, he did. And he's my fantasy guy. So if you think my game was a give me, really, why, why don't you take the next one? Oh, Steelers, Jaguars. <laughs> I'm going Steelers, 10-0. It, 
if they were in the NFC, I wouldn't root for them at all. But they're in the AFC. Now, I will say there's a caveat to that. I don't, I, I want them to have a great season. I don't want them to win a Super Bowl because they already have one more ring than the Cowboys. And I don't want them to have two. Yeah, well, here's the way I look at it. You see how animated Andy was about this show? That's what I think this game's going to be. <laughs> Steelers is going to walk all over. It isn't going to be a game. So. Yeah, but hold on now. Hold on now. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I believe the Steelers played somebody that you would have said the same thing about. And it wasn't a cakewalk. They played the Cowboys. Yeah. And they were 7-0. and Yeah. I, and the I, Cowboys were Well, I was just so surprised because the Steelers left their first and second stringers at home. So I was trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> please, please. So, look, even though it's in Jacksonville, I, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's I'm just, putting the money on the Steelers, but it would be, you know. Now, if you actually had real money you were putting down, that would be a good long shot game. I was going. That's what I was going to say. It would be interesting to actually go to a betting site and just throw like 25 bucks down. And no, we don't have access, and we don't know what the odds are, but you can look them up and text it to us. Yeah, but you got to think if you put 25 down on the Jaguars, 25 bucks. Yeah, you're at least making 100, I would think. Yeah, it's it's. It would I don't know what the odds are, but you're yeah. at least. All right, what's up next? Patriots at the Texans. Yeah, That's tough. It, it is because I mean, even you got at Cam the, or in Texans. Um, I know that the Patriots are still a better run team um, than the Texans. Although I do like some of the things the Texans do, but I'm I'm just gonna think Belichick's gonna find a way to claw back to to 500. So I'm I'm gonna go Patriots. You think so? I do. I'm contrary. I think because their records aren't too far apart. Four and five, two and seven. Well, according to your theory, they're a hundred percent more I was going to say than the Texans. It, you're right, they do. But I'm going to go Texans. Oh, I like the quarterback. Good. He's a Clemson guy. My daughter loves Clemson, so I like Clemson. Um, I, I'm going to go to the Texans just because. I think it would be hysterical to see the Patriots at four and six. All right. And not make the play. I mean, not that they're out. Yeah. If that happens, but you know, obviously the more losses, it gets that way. All right. Next um, one is near and dear to your heart. It is. It's the Eagles against the Browns in Cleveland. I'm really excited for the Browns of now. Um, every year, for what, 20 years, it's been, oh, the Browns. Oh, the Browns. Oh, the Browns. It, it, Johnny it, football. It's, oh, my God. Where Johnny football. So, you know, I, I think this is the Browns' year to hopefully get a wild card. I would like to see him go seven and three. Just, I mean, and the same thing, you kind of root for the underdog. But then I look at the Eagles at three, five, and one, and I'm like, boy, are they an underdog or are they leading the division that they're in? Mm. Boy, they, they, they could be. So I'm going to go with the Eagles to pull out a victory and solidify their first place standing. Oh, you son of a bitch. God, you're an ass. You're just an ass, man. How many times do I have to tell you, words hurt, Dennis? Words hurt. It's not just sticks and stones. I'd rather have you hit me with a stick and throw a stone at me than talk trash about my Am I talking trash about the Packers? Well, we haven't Not gotten yet. there yet. We haven't gotten there yeah. yet. Four and five Lions at the Panthers, who are three and seven. Um, you know, we're in Charlotte. Panthers is usually my backup team. But, and I, you know, I like Teddy Bridgewater, but he's out. It doesn't look like yeah, he's playing. I, know. I had to actually trade him off my fantasy team because he was my second quarterback. Um, with him not playing... I'm gonna go Lions, even though it's at the Panthers. I'm gonna I'm going Lions. I know. Stafford, I'm benching him because he has just done me nothing good. Really? Yeah. And, and again, but you know over. they're playing the Panthers and I the Panthers aren't even starting know. today. I know. And I'll tell you why in a couple of games. Uh right. why. But I I, I am I I'm going to root against the, I don't want to root against the Packers but I think the Lions are going to pull off uh, a win and stay in the playoff hunt. All right. Yep. And now we got the six and three Titans and the six and three Ravens and 
That on paper should be a really good game. It should be a good game. Be. Um, you know, I thought the Ravens were were just a little bit better, and you know, in their losses, I was like, hmm. I, I'm going to go with the Titans, and I, I think they're going to be the underdog in this game. Um, but I, I think the Titans are going to. You're going to take them. Uh, they're playing in Baltimore. You're I know that. Take them, huh? Yep, I am. I don't know. I, I, I'm going with the Ravens. I think their quarterback's better. All right. So I'll go. Ra- and it's home. And I, I, I always think there is a little bit to the home team, even though I'm not taking Seattle um, or the Panthers for that matter. But I'm taking the Ravens because, like you said, I think it's an evenly matched game. But I just think their quarterback's better, and I'll give them that home. All right. Home team. Ooh, this next one's a, a barn burner. 0-9 Jets, 2-7 and Chargers. I got to go Chargers because if I'm the Jets, I'm tanking the year so I can pick up Trevor Lawrence as my quarterback next year from Clemson if he still decides to go into the draft. Exactly. Because he's waffling. I exactly. Think. But – I, I would, too, just because, you know, they need to have the anti-Dolphins undefeated season here and, and you know, not win a game and do it. So I, I think the Jets can successfully pull it off. I, I'm going with the Chargers. Now, if you were the coach of, like, obviously neither one of us is, have coached in the NFL, but I would like to think if I was the coach of an 0-9 team, besides the fact I'm thanking my lucky stars I haven't been shit canned yet, um... At this point in the year, I would I would sit down with the owner, and I'm being serious, and basically say, look, we're 0-9. I'm not saying we should tank the rest of the year to get Trevor Lawrence, but what I am saying is I just want to basically try any type of play. Yes. Just try anything. Yes. Just to see what works and what doesn't. All they because need to do is I, you know, you're done if, if I'm the nine. coach, I'm bringing the team in, and I'm going to show them the movie Waterboy. Right. And that's what I'm going to say. There's our model for the rest of the season. Yeah. And why why, why not? I, I'd i show them, and I, I get the joke and stuff, but seriously, I'd show them. Because, you know, in college, you always see the, these trick plays in college. Yeah. But as soon as it goes NFL, they don't do the trick plays. I guess it's because there's more on the line, blah, blah, blah. Yep. I would still – I'd be pulling that stuff. Yep. Dolphins and Broncos. So the reason why I pulled Stafford is because – I have, I have, and I'm going to try this rookie again um, from the Dolphins, the quarterback, and I'm going to. That's who I'm playing in place of Stafford. Uh, Tua. Yep. Tua. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to give him a shot, and he he did well for me this last week, and I I think that's who I'm going for my second quarterback. So I'm going with the Dolphins, and if Bussy, if you're out there, I'm pulling for for the Dolphins this week. Can the warm weather Dolphins make it in at the Broncos? In mid November is the question. That that Mile is high up. That air is thin. Weather. That air yep. is thin. Just was there. Next up is the game of the week, baby. Four twenty five one Fox Cowboys Vikings. Dun 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 dun. I like I said, I cannot believe they're starting Dalton. I just, I just can't. Um, you know, look, Cowboys fan. But also a realist. Uh, I don't like to say I'm an optimist or a pessimist. I'm a realist, and I'm just going to have to say they're playing at the Vikings. I, th- I think the Vikings are going to win. I think that I think the Cowboys are going to be two and eight. I think the Vikings are probably going to win. No, but really? from a per- really, but from a particularly <laughs> selfish standpoint, I'm going with the Cowboys to pull the upset <laughs> because you have Dalton on your fantasy team. <laughs> You know, and, I, hope, and I hope I don't want the Vikings to win. I, so well, because I, they're I root, in your division, I am rooting for the cup. Can you not take it? I am rooting for I, the Cowboys. I'll take it, but I I actually hope they pull Dalton in the first quarter and put Gilbert in. Well, I'm not starting him, so it doesn't matter. No, fine. So it's good. Now the real game of the week is the next one, which is the Packers at seven and two. Who's at the Colts, which are six and three? That's a tight both, one. That is tight one. They both have their ups and downs, and they both have really winning records. Unlike the previous game of the week that you mentioned. <laughs> so I, of course, am going green and gold, and I am going Packers by a touchdown. Oh damn! You're throwing points down. I am on the Packer game. I am. All right. Uh, I mean, I'll take the Packers. I mean. I, 
the Colts are six and three, but I think they've struggled to get to that six and three. Whereas the Packers haven't had super easy games, but I just think they're a better team, more confident, even on the road. Uh, I'll actually take the Packers by 10. I'll okay. throw points on that one just because you yeah. did. But I, I, I think they'll beat them by 10. Good. And then we're going to uh, Sunday night, Kansas City Chiefs, Las Vegas Raiders, 8-1 Chiefs. No, Hands down, I'm just going Chiefs. I don't give a crap that it's out in Las Vegas. I think the Chiefs are – I think I think for I think the championship game in the AFC could come down to the Chiefs and the Steelers. Huh. And I, I like the Chiefs, I like Mahomes, I like what they're doing. But something tells me the Raiders are gonna come up with something and they're gonna pull an upset Sunday night. So I'm picking the Raiders Ooh. over the Chiefs to give them their second loss. Like a three point upset? It's going to come down to, yeah, a field goal towards the end of the game or a touchdown catch to, to win it all. Do you see the Chiefs and the Steelers being in the wild card championship? Very wild. Very or not wild, wild card. in the division. In the division champions. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah absolutely. AFC divisional champions. And then Monday night, we got the Ravens and Buccaneers. And Rams. Rams. Rams uh, sorry, not Ravens. Rams and Buccaneers. And, you know... I'm going Bucks. I knew you would. Tom Brady's my quarterback in fantasy. I know. And it's in Tampa, and my daughter's a Tampa fan. I know. And because I know she's going to listen to this, I'll go Tampa Bay just to keep her at ease until the game Monday night. <laughs> she's a 17-year-old girl. You think she listens to her dad's podcast? You're she's, crazy. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Does your daughter listen to our podcast? Absolutely not. Exactly. Your son doesn't listen to our podcast. Nope. Exactly. Nope. Way to have support. So we're going Bucks. All Wait, right. you said Bucks, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm going Bucks too. But I think it'll be tight. So I'll I'll go points on this one too. I go three. I say yeah, it, it should five. be a close game. It should be a close game. Yeah. All right. We went to the comic book store because yesterday yes, was did. New Comics Wednesday. Andy, what did you pick up? You know, God, it was another light week. Yeah. I got two books, and that was it. I got. The True Believers, number one. They're all number ones. I don't even know why I say that. True Believers, it's a reprint of an Incredible Hulk issue where they fight the Thunderbolts. So I picked that up. The main reason I picked it up, I didn't get it when it came out 20 years ago because I believe it did come out in 95 to 97 in that window. Um, so I didn't get it then, but Mike Diodato did the art. And it was when Mike Mike's style has definitely grown and changed since then. And he's more realistic now with the way he does his lighting and, and stuff and even the proportions of his figures. But back then, Mike was doing more of an imagey type style, real Mark Silvestri looking. And I, I love that stuff. I thought I thought Diodato's stuff of Wonder Woman in the early 90s was really good. He, he carried it over with Marvel. So I got that as well. And then I also got uh, the DC limited series of uh, Death Metal number five. Dark Knight's Death Metal, number five of six. Greg Capullo, Scott Snyder. It's a fun, fun series. Uh, the main cast is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and pulling some of the other characters as well. It's just a fun little series, and I, you know, I got it more for the arts. I follow Greg Capullo. As myself being an artist, I follow artists more than writer. But Scott's doing a nice job with the writing. So that's it. Two wow. books. Well, I wish I could say the same thing, but it was not a small week for me. Jesus. Now, the good news is a couple of them I was waiting for, which was the second printing of Avengers, The La the Age of Conchu, which was we had talked about, The uh, End of the Moon Knight. Yep. They have a Phoenix cover. It was really cool. I had to get it. This one I am just going to show. We had talked about it. I finally got my hands on the Savage Dragon 252, the second printing that goes through all the different styles of art. We talked about it. I got my hands on it. Um, this week it was, I got the same True Believers. Um, Hellion and Cable came out. Um, Juggernaut, Wonder Woman, I mean Wonder Woman, Spider Woman. That one looked really good. I was really excited because I'm a Star Trek fan. Um, Star Trek Voyager 7's Reckoning. Seven's always, she's a fan favorite of a character. She's hot. Jerry Ryan. Yeah. But she's a great character. She played her incredibly well. She made the appearance on Discovery. 
And I mean, to me, she was one of the highlights of Discovery um, last season. So anyway, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, Picard. I said Discovery. Um, X Force, um, Black Widow. Now this one was a little interesting um, because it's called Widowmakers, Red Guardian, and uh, Yelena Belova. So looks like it's going to tie into the movie. So I had to pick it up because I really want to see what they're what they're going to do with it. And then I'm just going to show you guys a really cool cover. So they came out with Dune, with obviously the new Dune stuff that's coming out. They came out with uh, the House of uh, Entraides, and it's actually a really cool cover. And when you open it up, so it's like a die cut. I know, I feel like we're going back into the 90s with all the little funky things. But the art looks pretty interesting. I'm going to test out the Dune because I really want to see where they're going to go with this. Um, so, yeah, it was... A pretty big week. I got a little bit uh, that I have to read, yeah. and then and then uh, I wound up picking up Giga, um, which has the potential. It looks kind of interesting. I, I didn't pick it up last week. I thought about it, so I did snag it this week. So yeah, we got a lot of comic, I got a lot of comic books to read. That's cool. The Dune looks cool. I'm curious if they're going to reprint the movie at the original movie adaptation that Bill Sienkiewicz drew. From the oh, from when the movie first yeah. came out in the eighties, because I never picked it up when it came out. I've seen it, and you know it's Bill's artwork. It's 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 a gorgeous looking. I think it was a couple issues. It wasn't just one. Yeah, and but, I, I, um, I I don't think that's one I originally owned. I hope they reprint it because that I would definitely pick up as a reprint. Not that the back issue probably cost you know doesn't doesn't cost much, but yeah. So from the TV front, we had a couple of really good shows this week that we have to talk about yes, before our movie review. So South Park, Andy calls me up. He's like, dude, did you see South Park's uh, premiere episode called Pandemic? I'm like, no, no, I haven't even looked at it. He goes, just stop what you're doing. You and your wife just need to sit down and watch. I'm like, oh, that's a trick to get my wife to watch South Park. She's not a huge so She watches it occasionally. He goes, nope, she's going to want to watch it. South Sat Park, down. South Park, the pandemic special. It's an hour long. So right there, I was like, what? When I heard that, because I never knew anything about it. I heard, I was, once I was listening to a podcast, I, you know, I listened to a bunch of them, of course, and I do one. And um, I heard something about it and I heard it was an hour long and I'm like, what? So I, I was working in front of my computer. So I queued it up to watch as I was working and it did not disappoint. They hit on, it's like I said, it's the pandemic special. They came out, I believe, September 30th. So, you know, before the election, they hit on everything. They hit on, obviously, the pandemic because it's the pandemic special. But they also hit on some of the protesting that was going on over the summer. Um, they they just touched on everything. And, and it doesn't matter with everything going on doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right. Yeah. It was no holds barred. They, oh, yeah. they ripped on everything and everybody. And I had talked to a couple people and they're like, dude, this may be one of the funniest they, shows that they've done since they started. And I was like, wow, there's some really, really good ones. But honestly, it didn't disappoint. I, I laughed and even my wife thought it was incredibly funny. Um, there were so many good parts that they did from when they first started out. Hey, we're meeting downtown. Oh, are these going to be pro peaceful protests or riots? Oh, my God. And it starts. That's how the episode starts out. And it just keeps going from there. They uh, they talk about, you know, of course, they're wearing masks, but they're all wearing them down on their chin as chin diapers. <laughs> so they joke about that. They've got a Fauci. They've got Fauci in it. Uh, Trump is in it, of course. They talk about the bats, you know, and how the virus came about. And, we're, and, and I, Disney's highly involved. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I don't really want to spoil it because it is so funny, but we do have a clip we want to show you. So let's take a look at this clip real fast and we'll come right back. All right, children, welcome back to class. I'm your new teacher, Detective Harris, and this is our homeroom teacher's assistant, Officer Johnson. I'm 
I don't know if I can do this, Mitch. I fucking hate kids. I can't be a teacher. Oh my god, I forgot how much it sucks to be around everybody. I think I'm gonna be sick all over cow. <laughs> Fuck you! That's enough! We all have to quarantine together for two weeks. You don't want to infect your families, do you? You were all exposed to a student here who was taken to the hospital due to COVID. Yes. Uh, we were there and Token was actually taken to the hospital because you guys shot him. Yes, due to COVID. If it weren't for COVID, all the previous teachers would have still been here, we wouldn't have been in the class, and nobody would have gotten shot. It was COVID related. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Dude, okay. that is by far I I pulled that one specifically because I love Cartman. Yes. And the fact that so this, you know, you guys just saw the clip, so it's not a spoiler. The teachers well, leading up to it. So we will spoil this little bit. If you haven't seen it, and you just saw this clip, you're like, what the heck? The principal of the school has a Zoom call earlier in the episode with all the parents. And he basically says, look, we're reopening the schools. So all the kids will come back. We'll have the plexiglass up, blah, blah, blah. However, the teachers don't want to come back. And they quit. And they quit. <laughs> but don't worry. We found this other group of people that are out of a job that are ready to step in. And, and who, who's, who's out of work? Who has been recently de defunded, defunded going to cr Oh, the police. Of course. So as you see in that clip, they bring in the police as teachers. So, I mean, you know, you've got to know, if you've never seen South Park, I would expect anybody watching this has at least heard of it. I mean, it's been on for 20 some years now. This is 24th season. 24th season. So you've at least heard of it. So, you know, the, the, the black student in the school is called Token. Yes. And because there's only one, that hence, hence his name. There only one, so that's right. his name. They, they named him Token. So if you're wondering, yes, South Park is not a politically correct show. Um, but like we said, they take shots at everybody. So in the clip, you know, he gets shot. I cannot, I, I couldn't believe it when the cop said, I got him. Oh my God. I, I got him. And the other guy's like, yeah, and we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. and of course, the only kid to get hit was, was joking. And of course, oh, so now we know if it's going to be peaceful protests or if it's going to be riot. And I mean, like I said, they just didn't hold back on anybody for any reason. You know, what we've been dealing with for the last eight, nine months right now, they literally encapsulated it into one. And wow, one great. show, and it was it was it was funny. You, you have to have a thick skin because you know this is not a PC show, um, but and, and it hits on everything. And I will say this too, like uh, if I think most South Park episodes. See, I I don't watch South Park on a regular basis. I watched it for the first few years, and then like everything else, I just kind of fell off. Um, so when I came back to South Park a couple of years ago and I started watching it once again, just every now and then, I was shocked to see that they drop F-bombs on it because it's Comedy Central. Now, you know, it's not NBC, so they can do that. But I was still shocked because they didn't do that when the show well, first see, started. See, that means you missed the important episode that they had where they literally put a counter in the corner. Oh, and I every did. time they dropped an F-bomb, they clicked it and the counter went up on there because they, they, <laughs> were, they were trying to press... Again, push the envelope, which South Park does. Love you guys. I mean, I, okay. I just just love it. So when I came back to it, I was shocked. I was like, oh wow. But I, I, you know, the episodes I watched leading up to this one weren't anything that I wasn't like, oh, I'd let my kid watch that. My daughter's 17, she's a senior in high school. I'm like, yeah, I'd let her watch that. But I can be honest, after watching this pandemic special, <laughs> there's the explanation with the bat. From China, I don't want to spoil it, but visually, how the virus was brought over here when they visually showed it, I don't want my I don't I don't want my daughter watching that. And and it is one of those things. If I had a son 
that was 17, I'd be like, oh, you got to watch this. But because mm-hmm. I have a daughter, I'm kind of like, you know what? Nah, or, she doesn't or need to watch big Disney fans. Oh, yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if you have a kid that's a big Disney fan, too. Yeah, don't, you don't let them see this yeah. one. Point is, if you have kids and they usually watch South Park, or you let them, or you, you're you thinking about it, watch it first and then decide. Because yeah. it, there's a, it's a racy scene in it that, yeah. But it, it, this has been an <laughs> absolute talk among, uh, among our peers. I mean, even people who don't normally like South Park l- like this episode. And again, you can't take anything personally from it, but they, they hit everything. It was funny as heck. One of the funniest episodes they've done, at least in a long time. Oh at least to so maybe good. when Chef was on it. Yeah. You know, but uh, anyway, I definitely, for a rating, because oh we're going to do our comic book rating. I'm going 9.8. Uh, 9.8. You... It's up there. It's that's not, It's not a 10, but I'm going 9.8. I'm going to do a 9.6 because it was, it was mint, man. It really was near mint. I mean, they're... There are a couple of things I would have wished they would have expounded on, but they they literally hit all bases. Loved it. Loved it anyway. So definitely watch that one. And next, we went to the movies. Yes, we did. This week's movie review, Freaky. What is Freaky? What is Freaky? Well, it came out on Friday the 13th, and it's Freaky. Is it Freaky Friday? Well, that was the original title of the movie was Freaky Friday the 13th, but due to copyright issues. Which is weird because they literally threw Freaky in front of it. So that's... I know. So there still must be something there because they had to change the the, the, the name. It was literally, for those of you who haven't seen, it was Freaky Friday. And there's been a couple of versions out there. Um, You know, Jamie Lee Curtis or, you know, the original. But it's the same concept. You know, usually it's mother and daughter. They swap bodies. And that's what this is. The only difference is there's a twist in this one. So it is the teenage cheerleader. Yep. But she winds up switching body with Vince Vaughn, who's a serial killer. The who's butcher. A killer, the butcher of Blissville. So it, it was great. If you've seen Happy Death Day, it's from the director of Happy Death Day. Um, and he wrote this one as well. And I love both uh, Happy Death Days. They, I thought they yes. were great. And that was basically, since we're not reviewing that, but just to give you an idea, these are comedy horror movies. Happy Death Day was basically Groundhog Day, except every time the, the college student died, who was a girl, uh, she woke up the next day. And she had to figure out who was killing her. And what she did, boom. Time can move on. Anyhow, yeah. In Freaky, like Dennis said, Vince Vaughn plays the butcher of Blissville, yep. who, uh, you know, he's a serial killer. He strikes Friday 13th, whatever, once a year, I guess. Uh, Catherine Newton plays Millie, the high school senior. Uh, she's been in a bunch of things. Uh, and, you know, he goes to stab her, and he's got this magical knife. And when he stabs her right here, he also gets stabbed. They end up switching bodies. They wake up the next day, switch bodies. And watching Vince Vaughn, who, you know, if my first exposure to him was in the 90s with John Favreau and Swingers and stuff, it's always been comedy. And in the past few years, he's taken a turn to do these dramas that we've watched that have been really good. Cell Block 99. Cell Block 99. <laughs> Hardcore drama. Vince Vaughn just pulls it off. But what what with this one, what, what made this a little bit different is Vince Vaughn. So, you know, this is a slasher movie. Yeah. That's crossed over with Jumanji. And, and that's the way I, I'm characterizing. It's Friday the 13th, Jumanji, mash them together. Because he wakes up in her body, or vice versa, and he has to act feminine. And the moment he wakes up, and he's like, oh, where am I? And you're like, that that's not Vince Vaughn. So he has to act like this high school cheerleader and just does a great job of 
being very feminine. He, you know, he does a typical, he raised, oh my God, why do I look like this type of stuff? But what was even just as good yes. was, was Catherine Newton, the actress that plays Millie, acting like a six foot, he's like six foot four, I think. Six, four, six, six. six. Yeah, something like that. Acting like, like when she got up and got out of bed and walked, she walked like a dude, which was hysterical. Because she's a petite, you know, five, five, you know, girl. And she's walking, you know, legs akimbo, kind of bowed, like she's got junk and stuff, you know. And, it, oh my God, it was it, just... They both pull it off. She's got the best deadpan killer eyes. And all of a sudden she, you know, she's like, I don't know. And it's just the stare she does... She looks like a stone cold killer. She pulled off. They both pulled off each other. I think Vince Vaughn called up Jack Black and said, "Hey, how did you do so well in Jumanji? How did you get the girl movement oh, style?" Man. And I mean, he he pulled it down. Matter of fact, there was one scene that was so funny, and it was the scene where you know he's trying to convince Millie's friends oh, yeah. that it's her, and he has to do a little dance. We've got it. Take a look. It's me, it's Millie. Hill, Hill, Blissfield. I feel our glory and our might. Oh my God! <laughs> he pulls God. that off. He did. So, hi, hi, beaver. <laughs> Just. <laughs> it's got the butt wiggle the, and everything in it. He was twerking. Yeah. The thing I liked about it too is it's, I don't consider it, it slasher movies the best because I think they're, to me, there's a difference between horror, a horror movie, and a slasher movie. Yes. Because to me, Paranormal Activity is a horror movie. Okay. Right? Yep. You've seen those. Yep. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, every one of them so, with my daughter. Yeah. And I liked them. Yeah. I mean, I you know, the fourth one kind of went off the rails a little it's bit. But the shot. first one. It's Blair was, Witch Project. Right. But those, to me, are horror movies. Slasher movies, especially this being a slasher comedy, and it is rated R because... There's no holds barred with the way people get killed. It, it wasn't scary because there just wasn't jump scares and things like that. Because you knew the scenario. You knew they had to switch back and everything. But what I give them credit for is upping the game in regards to how Vince Vaughn as the butcher in the beginning of the movie killed people. Yeah. There, there was actual. It was in Venice. Right. And there's actual story behind it. Alan Rock plays the oh shop class teacher. And he was 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 great. You know, we were, we were talking, we were sitting in the movie and we we're like, oh, wow. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I'm like, yep, Captain yep. of the Enterprise B. Yep. And I'm like, boy, he does not like her and she does not like him. I wonder how he's going to die. It is as graphic as you could actually be in it. And I mean, it was, you, I, well, there, not was only, there was not, nothing left to the imagination. Not only that, but it was because he, because uh, Millie is inhabited by the butcher, they, Alan Ruck and her get into a physical fight first before she ends up killing him. Right. And the physical fight, without giving anything away, is just awesome because, you know, Alan Ruck looks like he's about six feet tall. Yep. Once again, she's 5'5", five, five, petite little, you know, petite girl. And he's, he's kicking her. <laughs> he's, he's, he's throwing her and kicking her. And you're like, there's no way she should be able to kill him. I mean, if she snuck up on him, yes, but she doesn't. And they get into a physical fight and she still manages to... To do the deed, but it was, but it was inventive. It and was it inventive. Made, it made yeah. sense. Again, they didn't make any physical leaps of 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 logic that no. you're like, oh, that couldn't happen. This was well thought out, and you know, it's Bloomhouse. You know, and they do these type of movies, and most of them have been very successful. Um, this just follows in that vein. It was fun to watch. It was enjoyable. It was gory. So, if you don't like gore, this is not your kind of movie. No. But it was well acted. All the characters, you know, like her friends and everything like that. Uh, 
The mother played her part very well. I wasn't fond of her sister, but she played her part very well. Right. Um, again, the cast was good. It was incredibly well acted. The story was believable. It was fun, minus the magical dagger part, which is the, the leap of faith that you got to get to have the freaky thing happen. It was a really fun movie. Well, the other thing, too, is there was even a bit of character growth with Millie as well. You know, usually in, in like these these horror movies or, or slasher movies and and even comedies, you don't see the character growth because they're just going yes. for slasher for laughs. But there was a nice character growth with Millie. Well, and because that that she got while she was inhabiting Vince Vaughn's body. Right. She know? grew as did her potential boyfriend. They right. both grew throughout the movie, yes. which just makes for a really, really great scene towards the end of the movie. <laughs> like I said, all I can say is there are some really good one-liners. The action's good. If you like slasher and gore, it had its fill of it, but it wasn't over. It wasn't like Hellboy where it was just over the top the last oh, one. Oh, no, no, no. You no. know, but it was it was solid all the way through. Kudos, guys. You, I had. We were both talking. We both had expectations when we went into the movie, right? And we weren't disappointed. It wasn't necessarily superseded, but I mean, it was right what we were expecting, and at least as well done as we were hoping. Yeah, it definitely met expectations a little higher. So great. It's a uh, yeah. First, it's an hour forty-two, so it's not a huge chunk of time. Yep. Um, you know. Depending on where you live, theaters might not even be open. I, I'd say by Christmas, this thing's probably on demand. You know, if you're looking for something fun to watch, i definitely give it a watch. Yeah, uh, there, there were a total of four of us in the theater. I mean, yeah. you know, with the theaters, they're taking a beating right now. So even if theaters are opening your town and you're worried about going, where we go, you can see the seating before you go. So you can see how many people are there. There were four people there. We had a whole row to ourselves. Um, so yeah, uh, grade wise, I'll go, uh, I'll go like an 8.2. I thought it was really good. I laughed harder than I thought I would. Yep. I, I, I didn't jump from being scared, but just from some of the tactics that were used in the killing, I was like, Whoa, you know, that yep. type of stuff. See, and I thought they had a couple of jump scares. I didn't exactly jump out of my seat, but they were there. No, but you she did put just... your hand on my knee once and that was weird. <laughs> Oh, I got that was a journey. Say, yeah. Well, there's only two of us in the row, Dennis. So, now I'm going with an eight five. I thought it was very fine. I thought it was really a solid movie. I was kind of hoping it was going to be this, and it did. I mean, it met my uh, expectations. Uh, Christopher Landon directed a really another solid movie, just like with Happy Death Day. The first one was really good. The second one was even better. He put out another quality product. I mean, I recommend it. If you can go to the theaters and you're not worried about it, they need a little help. This is a, definitely a fun movie. If not, it will be on demand soon. It's worth getting together. Um, uh, I definitely wouldn't take a little let little kids watch this um, because of the gore factor. But, yeah, definitely. 8-5. So, I mean, I think we're kind of on the same page with it. And because we love you so much. There's nothing during the credits. There's nothing after the credits. Yep. So as soon as that movie's over, you don't want to wait. Get up and walk. Because that's the one thing is, with movies like this, you just never know. So we suck it up for you, and we sit there till the very last credit rolls. Yep. You don't have to. You're yep. welcome. Now, we're Back to on, TV. Back to TV. We're on to... We had... Chapter 11 of The Mandalorian, The Heiress. Yep. Another one. So, again, we, we reviewed the, the Chapter 10 last week, and, and now Chapter 11 came out. We weren't sure because last week's was almost a one-off. Um, what were they going to get back on track and deal with The Mandalorian? Oh, did they ever in spades. It was dealing with Bo-Katan. Um, and for those of you who aren't huge fans, she's incredibly important in Mandalorian lore. 
Um, you would have seen her on Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Yeah, um, she's only been in animated. Stuff. And and it's in the animated, right. and then Rebels. Right. And um, it's all about her wanting to come back. In the original cartoons, Katie Sackhoff played her. Right. And the great news here is, who did they get to, as an actress to play her? Katie Sackhoff. They cut her hair. She looked just like you would expect. Now, did you get the voice before you saw her take her helmet off? Yes. You did? See, yes. I recognized it, but I couldn't place it because I didn't watch. I've never seen any of the animated stuff. So when they introduced these three new, I mean, are they called Mandalorians? Yeah, they are. Yep. Okay, so they introduced these because I, to recap, I'm not into the Star Trek world so much. So I ask these questions. So you don't have or to. Star Wars as it is. This or case. Star Wars like this. <laughs> a friend of mine just side note. A friend of mine or a guy I just met. We were talking and he's like, "So are you Trek or Star Wars?" And I said, uh, "I'm both, but neither." And what I mean is, I'm not a Trekkie. And I'm not a whatever a Star Wars one's called. I just like the movies. I go see them, but I don't read the books. I haven't watched any cartoons, uh, stuff like that. So anyhow, Star Wars, thank you. So when they introduced in this episode the three new Mandalorians, two women and a guy, I kind of got the voice. And I'm like, God, why do I know that? And it, it was killing me because up until the point, I didn't think they were going to take their helmets off. They're not supposed to. But all three of them took their helmets off. So right there, you can answer that in a second. They showed it was Katie Sackhoff. And I was like, yes, because she is one of my favorite actresses. She is so good in everything she does. And she always plays a badass, which from seeing just interviews with her, uh, you know, not playing a character, she just seems like the sweetest, most down to earth. You know, and, until you're country girl become a Battlestar Galactica fan, which I'm going to work on you on, because she plays Starbuck, and that's where I knew her as first convention right. I met her at was 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 yeah, Starbuck that. was originally a dude, wasn't it? In, in the original seventies, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Starbuck was Dirk Benedict. Yes, yeah, so that. you know they gender bent it and went with her, but she was badass in that, and I mean she fits the role perfectly, and then. Um, they only did one season of it, but they had done the remake of um, The Bionic Woman. Right. And she played the bad guy, let's put it that way. Um, and she was really good. The original Lindsay Wagner wasn't so hot, so the show didn't make it. That, and that's too bad. But I knew her from Starbucks or at the first convention. She was great. And she plays that exact kind of role in this where she has to, she needs to recover the dark saber in order to take back the leadership of Mandalorian. But here's my question: yeah. Why'd they take their helmets off? What's the deal? You know, the main Mandalorian, the shows around, will not do it. But everybody else seems to be like, Ugh, rules. <laughs> well, 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 okay. <laughs> so they, they they explain it in 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 here. So there's a little piece, and it's oh come on, I watched the whole thing. I must have missed it. You you missed it. So when they take it off and he goes, you're not Mandalorian, she explains what house she was from. So it's kind of like Klingon War. They're from houses and all these different houses have been at war and they've been battling each other and stuff. Um, and it's only usually when one Mandalore who has the Darksaber can unite everybody. Um, they explain that he's a foundling. Uh, and the foundling... Was he wasn't found just by any of the Mandalorian sex. It winds up being that it was a religious zealot sect that found him, and they're taught they want to go back to the old ways, the ancestral ways, which is why when you saw it last season, you know, you've got them pounding on the armor, the armor. Right. Now, my understanding in history is that the armorers were never the leaders of the clan, but they were highly respected because they're the ones that gave you the pieces of Beskar. So uh, in this case, she winds up looking like she's actually the leader of this clan. She uh, taught him their very specific ways. Most of the other Mandalorians don't follow it, but there's not a lot that you can read or find out about this. So 
this whole thing about having to wear helmets and never taking it off, it appears to be that it was based around this particular group, which makes sense okay. because he's learning all of this stuff as he goes and he's starting to see so the here's, world. So here's the question. Do you, on think, blinders. do you think... So in the Star Wars lore, I guess, is this the first time they've ever explained the whole taking the helmet off? Like, nobody's ever taken their helmet off before. Like, I, the movies and the... Correct. Okay, because my point is this. Do you think they're doing this so they get to a point to where he'll take his off so the actor actually gets screen time? I don't or, think so. You don't think so? You I don't think, think so. Always... Now, if anybody out there... I, I read a lot of the books and stuff like that, the role-playing games... If, if there is some information out there that talks about it that I don't know in the expanded universe, just leave us a, a message or something because we'd like to know it. Um, but as far as I know, no, they, they designed these set of rules for this particular set for this show. Oh. So that that's okay. what my take is. Again, if we're I just, wrong, let us know. Well, I'd really like the actor and it'd be, you know... <laughs> <laughs> well, at least give him some downtime by himself where he can take I off. think they are in contract dispute because he wants actual FaceTime. Gee, you think? And they were like, no, because of this, the way this, this character was developed. Yeah, so but that I, goes to like Doom Patrol where, where um, in the Doom Patrol show, Brendan Fraser isn't actually the robot it's a different actor and brendan fraser just does the voice yes now i get the point behind it because you know brendan fraser's heavier set so when the whole story of rebuilding him as a robot man he has a different build so yeah. i get it yeah but at the same time if i was uh the actor pedro Pasquale, pascal pascal yeah i'd be like well how about i just voice it then i'm, I'm kind of tired of having to walk around and do all this crap yeah. Why don't I just voice it for you guys? Because you did because they did a whole episode that way from season one. Right. He was unavailable. Somebody else was in the, the armor and guy he came back. Yeah, he came in and, and, and did the voiceover again. Yeah. I mean they could. I don't know. Um I like the chemistry, so I hope that nothing changes, but if they do, I, I understand that. And you know, it's it's something so easy where, you know, they can bring him in and I mean, we're dealing with Boba Fett. We're dealing with yeah. now the child, ch Children of the Watch, you know. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with all the, the Mandalorian stuff. But um, quite a fun, action-packed episode filled with lots of information. Um, and again, the child was in it. The child was great. You know, <laughs> he, had to, he had to be babysat for a little bit. Yep, with the frog people from, la frog from, people. from, from last episode. And One of the eggs hatched. So. Little little child was eyeing the little little baby that was hatched. Yeah, nothing happened. Which was a which is apparently a huge uh, point of contention in the uh, Twitterverse. Um, was from last episode with everybody oh, with, with the egg eating and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know. It was, it's... You know, Baby Yoda's not real. Right. This, this is made-up stuff, guys. It's science fiction. Um, totally enjoyable. This was a nuts and bolts Star Wars history geeky fan episode all the right. way through. And then at the end, they they bring up Ahsoka. Uh, Ahsoka. And, they're, and I was like, oh! All excited. And my wife's like, Who's Ahsoka? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, okay. So then I pulled out my phone. I'm like, here's this. Watch this. Well, who's Bo-Katan? Here's this. Watch this. And I said, I kind of kind of come up to speed on it. So I am so looking forward because it looks like we're going to have a live action uh, Ahsoka. I don't know who's playing her, and I'm not even going to go look. I, I kind of want to be surprised by this. I really hope because all these – you know the the story's moving forward throughout the season, obviously with with the Mandalorian's main mission. But I really want to see Tim Timothy Oliphant again. Yes, I want to see Katie Sackoff again. Yep. So I hope that they get worked back in as the season goes on. Yep. Do we know how many episodes are in this season? Eight. Is it eight? I think so. Nine. I don't know. I just I those actors did such a great job in their respective episodes that yep it's a it's a that i just want to see him come back 
at some point. Yeah. Um, and I want to see, um, God, I, I told you I'm awful with names. Who's the, 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 the woman from the first season that he was kind of partnered with? The actual fighter oh, in real life. Oh, oh, um, Karina. Her, well, that's the actress, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm trying to think of what, what I can't remember Karina's her. character name, but I want to see her again. I'm forgetting. Because I thought she was she, great in the she, first season. She was really good. Um, she's kind of a fan favorite. It's talked like they were going to do a, a series just developed around that character, which I would love. So uh, I'm I'm crossing. Yeah, my but what if there's what list. if what if it comes down to the the boardroom and they're like, okay, guys, we can do a series based around her, or we can do a series based around Katie Sackhoff and her two uh, Mandalorian friends. Oh, let's well, see. That's dealing with Mandal. That, I don't know. That's a tough one. That that is a tough one. I'd be that's like, well, they got Obi Wan coming out. We we'll, we'll scrap that one and put both of those in there. There you that, go. Yeah, that would be good. Um, yeah. So, so your, we got to give a grade. And uh, I'll go, um, I, you know, I, I say this every week. I got to write down my grades from the previous episodes because this episode I thought was just as good, if not better than one and two or chapter nine and 10. So, and I don't remember what I gave those, but I'll go, you know, I'll go 9.2. I thought it was everyone just doesn't disappoint. Yep. It and hasn't it hasn't crapped the bed yet. And I can't say that about season one. Yep. And season one had some ebbs and flows, but this one just seems to be arcing. I'm going to nine six because for me it was so chock full wow. of information. So much Star Wars goodness that was in there, so much history. Um, I mean, it was everything that I expected in there. You get, you're going to get little pieces dealing with the dark saber and the history. And I think star Wars fans are going to go nuts over this. If not leave us messages. Now we do want to leave on this note. Um, next week is going to be Thanksgiving. We're, we're, we're both going to be doing stuff with the families and going to be a part Dude, of it. Dude, don't say that. The governors are watching. Oh, sorry. Yes, we we're, are we're going to be, be locked down, I, separated. I will be at away. my house. My wife will be six feet away from me on the couch. My daughter will be another six <laughs> feet away on the other side because we have one of those sectional couches. We will social distance, eat our turkey. And watch football. That or that's my uh, Thanksgiving plans. So we will not be around to put together one, but we've got a special one that we had recorded, um, a very fun one dealing with. Um, remember the old ads from inside the comic books and all the great things that many of us bought. It's an episode dealing with it. We found out they put out a book about it, which was even better. And we wound up getting in touch with the author of the book and did an interview with them. So that's going to be our Thanksgiving special one. So you will want to tune in that week and, and, and hear that special. It was, it's a very fun one. Learn about some of the fun stuff that was advertised in the back of comics from the 70s and 80s. Yep. All right. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, you can catch us obviously on YouTube. But if you want to just listen iTunes and SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and where else? And, of course, all of your Amazon devices. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.